Welcome back to the greenhouse. Today we're experimenting with our wood power and solar powered heater together. Pushing hot air, just an air to air heater. So we're going to be experimenting with this and taking some temperatures and kind of modifying the system. And I wanna share some of my observations. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you to everyone who has. Super stoked that we have so many of you guys on board and I got a lot of good ideas coming, emails, comments, all types of stuff. So I love the suggestions. It makes me think a little bit more than I do now. So we can build some pretty cool things together. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Fire up those wood stoves. Let's get right into this. So I just went and unhooked and grabbed this noisy little fan. Now. This runs about 30 watts of power. So it's a pretty heavy drawing fan for the kind of fans we usually use here. So there's the impeller housing. Normally we're using like three to 10 watts to draw off of the systems, all of our solar systems. So today, this is not gonna be the one we're using actually. I've already got one in place up underneath our workbench here. You can see the black line running out here. So we've been operating that system for a couple days and we're trying to replicate scenarios and replicate data and results. And it's always so hard because we have to deal with the weather. We've had a few consecutive days that are pretty darn sunny compared to most days in winter. The temperature didn't want to really cooperate though. It's been like single digit temperatures, maybe up in the teens here and there. So it's been a pretty darn cold week here after New Year's. So we've got all these experiments that we're trying to share the data from and I'm trying to do them all at the same time. So we're going to work with the air heating system today and then the water heating system next. I want to collect a bunch of data from that. You can see I've got myself a 10 amp controller. We're going to get into what I had put together and this little contraption I built and the data from it. So I'm not sure where my son has went, but he started himself a small loaf of bread. He just stuck it in here right before I turned the camera on. We've got a nice hot fire going, cleaned out all the ash. So we are definitely holding some heat off of here. About 90 on the intake. So that's just the intake. You can see a little red dot back there. So that's our intake. And then we put some mesh over the piping there. The pipe runs all the way out and down. This is what I have been operating. Don't mind the heading collards that got toasted by that chipmunk in here. He's no longer a problem, but this pipe here is our exit pipe from the entire stove heating system. So if you're blowing air really fast, it tends to cool it down and exchange it faster and just dissipate the heat. So we've been experimenting with our little motor controller here. Now it's not hooked up to the system. We're running our geothermal right now. And I wanna go take a temp of our geothermal actually. So this has been running all day and sitting at 50 degrees on that big piece of steel. We're taking the 60 to 70 degree air in the greenhouse right now and putting it down there. So we can feed our fish over here real quick. I saw them, I don't know if my son had fed them or not yet. They look like they've already eaten. Yep, just the big boys coming up here. I wanted to get this baseline temperature for our geothermal on an average day. I mean, it's freezing outside. It's like seven degrees outside right now. Don't let the sunlight fool you. So we're gonna go check this system, see what we can push through. And I wanna share some observations of how this has been working. And I really don't think I'm going to keep our system blowing into the tunnel directly because it's kind of drying out the bed right in front of it. And these are all really early transplants some of them have been there for a little while and those are older so these are just fresh transplants that were almost dying in the cell so on a hope and a prayer i just planted whatever i could and then the chipmunk decided to eat some so the observations from this system operating i had it hung up and ran it for an hour or two to see what it would do in the bed it definitely heated our tunnel up quite a bit but it was just the airspace and it was sitting up high. So it was slowly filling it up and then it was running out the bottom because this doesn't seal 100%. There's like an inch gap at the bottom all the way down. So that being said, I just directly routed it to the floor. So it's blowing hot air, maybe 80, 90 degree air, whatever we're pulling. 
This thing can get up to 100 pretty quickly. I just started this fire like half an hour ago. It's starting to really throw off some residual heat and transfer it. So that little fan is running right off of the vent pipe here for our stove. So all of that heat trying to escape is going right into the Peltier device. So multitasking. Greenhouse stove is obviously quite useful as it's packed full of stuff and experiments. Got residual water boiling itself out of our copper tube there. That's pretty cool. And we've had some darn cold temperatures and no freeze ups with this thing. So burying the copper in sand and running it at a lower level. So everything pretty well drains out back into the tank when this is up where it's supposed to be. So our thermometer sitting a little over 50. It was just in the shade on top of a water barrel that's probably not very warm because it hasn't had any activity other than the sun here. So what I want to do is stick that thermometer in the tube because I don't have much better of a way to measure that. So we're going to run that for maybe five minutes and see if we pick up some decent temperatures. First, I have to hook up our little fan. So what we're looking at here is our little controller. You can see all of our lines ran in, nothing's touching. And then we have a cover we can put on this if we want to make it permanent. So what we're going to do is remove our geothermal because we are not sufficing for energy needs over on the experiment side of things here by the greenhouse bench. We need more power coming in. So now that that is hooked up, you can see all the lines run out. They're going to positive negative, quick hookups, and then we've got our lines running to our fan. Simple flick of the switch here. All right, so we've got some air blowing out. So obviously, I don't turn it all the way up. I just turn it to about a quarter. With our 130 cubic feet per minute, we're running about a quarter of that, whatever that would be, like 35, 40 or something like that. All right, so instead of making you guys wait, we can see that got up to, what, 80 degrees. So that was after five to five and a half minutes. And now my observations of having this fan blowing down onto my soil, it's really drying it out and it's not really doing what I want it to. It's heating up the soil just in the general three foot area of where it's touching and then it's just dissipating and filling up the bed again. We're heating the soil up to like 80 degrees in like a three foot circle there, which is quite interesting, but it's not what I want to achieve. So this was a cool idea and a cool experiment, but I want to reroute this thing to my geothermal tube. And the thought behind that is that this thing is the access to the underneath of my greenhouse, the floor basically. So eight foot down, seven and a half to eight feet. I hand dug, ran this tube. We've got like 70 or 80 feet in there. It was just a piece I had and I ran it all the way down and ran it back up to the other exit where we just took temps from our geothermal. So in theory, if I can use our floor as a giant battery, or heat battery. So in theory, I want to gradually transfer BTUs from my stove down to the floor of my greenhouse eight foot down. Now I won't see any immediate results and I might not see any results at all other than just having my plant stay alive, which we seem to have pretty good luck with, with all of our systems in place. So I want to try this out. We're going to get set up here and then we'll check it out. So that was pretty darn simple. You can see that now this just comes apart and I can set it back on and then it springs, hit myself in the eye there. But I made this myself just out of some simple bailing wire. So quite easy to remove and place back on. And that bad boy is dirty. Well, easy is as easy does. That fit right in there, right in the ring, the way I cut it on the ridge, it just sat right in there. I don't feel any air coming out, so. Since we've got a whole lot more to travel through, we can ramp up the speed a little bit, ramp up the RPMs on the motor. We've got her routed, not pushing a whole lot. And we brought the temperature down. I see a little piece of dust flopping in the wind because it's really drawing some heat from there. So everything is pretty darn warm right here the outer side that sand takes so long to heat up we're probably at like 40 minutes since initial startup the sun's bread is cooking up there 
Very nice. Our geothermal, even in summer, produces between 50 and 60 degrees. I mean, 62, I think, was the highest we ever saw with like 100 degrees in here plus. So it really does work and it works quite efficiently, especially running off of solar power. So if we've got 50 to 60 degrees average in the greenhouse soil temps overnight, we're not going to see much immediate results. We might see a degree or two, and that would be super significant to us. So if we can really raise the temps, I got this piece of steel here. I wanna operate this for quite some time before I actually take any temperatures here. So I did ramp up the flow a little bit and see the plants moving a bit not too much just a little quiver uh oh the lights came on it's going to be dark here soon I'd like to get the back side of the inside of the fan there so we saw 54 degrees down over here on this one yeah that's 55 there I wonder if adding more airflow actually is pushing a greater deal of heat through there faster than we want to so All right, so we should be back down to about a quarter. I was at half rate of flow, my son making himself a survival spear. So with simply half of the flow rate that we would normally get, so we'd be sitting at 65 estimated, we can be putting some heat down there. There he goes. With just a quarter of the flow rate, we can not put as much heat out of the tube as heat into the ground here playing with fire again. So if we can slow all of that heat flowing, it's going to transfer a lot more to the floor itself underneath our walkway there. So we could have a very warm soil and it would even help out if it warmed the soil, it would help warm our pond and all of these beds, everything and eventually it'll raise the temperature coming out by a degree or two. So that might not have been as solid of data for the whole system as it's pretty early. I just started this maybe an hour ago or whatever now. So the fire is pretty new. If we had it running for a couple hours, I may do another video on this where I run the stove for several hours with this system hooked up like this. But who wants to see the water heater and blow out some steaming hot water real quick? I saw somebody in the back raise their hand there, so let's hook that thing up. Get right, Daddy. You saw someone raise their hand. Through my screen. So let's go ahead and turn this off. Then we'll go ahead and we'll unscrew negative, unscrew the positive. It's boys' night tonight. Better tell mom. Positive in, negative in from the power source. Fan is unhooked. Now we just got to hook up our pump. Oh man, I'm gonna have to turn this thing the other way. Let's run our positive wire in here. And get our negative tightened down there. It wasn't easy doing this one-handed, holding a camera. It would be awesome if there was somebody who could hold the camera. <laughs> Theoretically, we're hooked up. All right, I hear it running. I'll turn it all the way up to get water flowing. I went through all the trouble of hooking this up and behind me, the sun is going down behind the trees. So our solar panel is in the shade now. So we lost all energy trying to ramp up that little pump. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and just steal a little energy from our battery here. So at a full 16 liters per minute, couple gallons a minute. We're putting 114 degrees into this big old tank. You can see it sweating like crazy. It was probably already sweating because it's nice and warm in here. Well, my son disappeared from his spot. There he is. Nice. Fully cooked loaf of bread, mixed berry bread. How hot is the bread? 140. We had enough energy to kick our fan on for our compost heater. Nice and warm there. I mean, it feels just like the 80, 90 degrees. Not sure, 100%. Hmm. All right, so 
looks like 88.4 on the metal there. That could just be residuals from having the wood stove going, but it seems to be blowing some decently warm air out there. I was just noting because that's on the same solar system as our geothermal water pump was such a high draw that it just took the system down and it couldn't continue to function. But now that it's just got one three and a half watt fan operating off of residual light, the solar panel is in the shade. So got some decent compost water coming through there. <sighs> About 81 degrees. Compost heater still running very well. We're two months plus right now, I believe. I don't have a calendar with it on there, but pretty sure we're about two months out. We can get a lot better temperatures to the floor with that system right there. I am just at a lack of power. So what I need to do is build a nice solar array for the top of our shed back there because we got a new roof on it now. I got to get our windmill set up. There is a bunch that I still have to do. I'm just constantly doing things even in the dead of winter and this greenhouse allows us to do most of it. So if anybody has any questions, definitely drop those in the comments below. There's, we've still got snow caked on the greenhouse here. But as you can see, my son's playing with ice, breaking it up, and it's just melting right away and evaporating into the air and going to the top of the greenhouse or to the top of our tunnels there when those are down. So it has been quite the journey to get to this point here, and I'm super enthralled that we can continue on, take a lot of what we've learned, pass it on to the next greenhouse that we're going to build. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you made it to this point. And if you made it to this point, thank you. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next video.